there's something freeing about putting that ball in your hand, just going to hoop. Yeah. Like Luca's like the guy, obviously. That's yeah. like even when you play against him, like you can feel it. We're the most competitive group, I think. You know, gonna be proving it over and over again. So we don't need any extra, extra riff on that. I've outkicked my coverage in terms of dreams that I've you know imagined in this game, and still feel like I got let a lot more in the tank. We're we're the hunter now, not the hunted, and you know trying to embrace that. Are you the best point guard ever? Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we in here. So we out here on location in Baltimore, dot, 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 county. Got to make sure to say the county part. I don't want to get pressed by any Baltimoreans. But uh, out here for the Curry Skills Showcase, presented by Under Armour. Man needs no introduction. Four-time champ. Finals MVP. Two-time MVP. Only unanimous winner in the history of the league. Purveyor of our favorite bourbon. Gentleman's Cut. Hello. Yes, sir. We on the cut, Mr. Big Damn. in the building. Damn, <laughs> opportunity to not have it right here. Again. And you can check out his uh, new documentary, Underrated, on Apple TV. Stephen Curry, what's going on with you, bro? I'm doing fantastic. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you, you come on the show. You're like a uh, big fan of the show. Big oh, we fan. appreciate oh, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Even though we talk a lot of shit. <laughs> So you be loved by Warriors fans. I'm going to say other fan bases, not so much. You tormented a lot of us. A lot of us still have post-traumatic Steph disorder from what you've done. But uh, for you, what's it like being the most likable asshole, I'll say, in NBA history? And when you're out there cooking dudes, do you ever feel bad? Like, they have family, that's Steph. That's a rhetorical question. But they got families. They got, they got <laughs> significant got others, loved ones, people who <laughs> care about them. Man, no, nah, it's interesting because, like, you've been on the stage for so long, uh, obviously going into, what, 15 years in the league, and uh, all the amazing experiences that we've had, finals back and forth with, you know, Cleveland, Toronto, Boston, you know, West Coast, uh, Western Conference showdowns with all type of fan bases. It's, that's what you want, right? You want to be in those conversations and those – arenas where you play in games that matter and um, you know building up a little equity and in, in terms of other fan bases minds but we've been on the other side of it too so uh, you get some you take some and it's all of all, all love at the end of the day so uh, yeah I, I appreciate the position of being a, like the likable asshole the most likable I was I mean, pointing, pointing, once you like pointed it. at the ring third quarter against the Celtics that was a little OD it, but <laughs> at that point, I was hostile. we were yeah, watching, yeah, we were all watching like, damn, this man, he literally told you, there's literally 12 more minutes of basketball left, <laughs> and this thing is over. Like, all right, hey, all right, you got it, dog. You can have the cornbread. You, you got our, our respect. But let's talk a little bit. Everybody knows you for the offensive exploits, but the defensive side. Early in your career, guys used to hunt you. You know, you talk about Mr. B here. You find yourself on the wrong side of his 55-point performance as a you rookie. You got to splice in when he dropped me? What? You got to splice in when he dropped me on that same nah, game. No, we out of respect. Nah, we nah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's we, we, we skipped to it. <laughs> but I think you, you've really made a point over these last few seasons, an emphasis on the defensive side. So just talk a little bit about the, the steps you've taken on that side and how do you improve as a defender in the league so late in your career? I love the way you said I used to get hunted, like it, like it ended. <laughs> I mean, not as much. <laughs> they can try now, but they yeah, got to respect but you. But I'm saying, you know, like, you, so a lot of it was just understanding the value of just competing. I always had a try factor, like I cared about it. You just get better with reps and um, understand the little nuances of how to overcome a little bit of the, the physical, uh, you know, difference of what it is in the NBA, because that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got to learn a little tricks. Like, I'm not the fastest, strongest, you know, quickest first step type dude. So I have to understand floor spacing and, you know, shooting the gaps and reading defenses and being one step ahead to make up the difference. So that came with reps. And then you get into the situation where, you know, look at the lineups that we had out there and, and big moments of the game. You got me, Clay. Our first run, it was me, Clay, Harrison, Andre, Draymond. You got defenders all over the court. They're obviously going to go at me um, and try to bring me into every pick and roll and put me in every action. So it, embracing the challenge of it, knowing that you're going to get scored on, it's the league. That's what we do professionally. But at a certain point, I'm going to get stops and make, you know, make it's just difficult uh, or as much as, uh, as much difficult as I can on whoever I'm going at. Um, and then, like I said, j the care factor, I think, is the biggest thing that turns you into a better defender because uh, you have to try and it's hard like it's you get tired out there like you get uh, bumped and, and bruised and you know you got to play a little bit above your size so just the care factor 
um, is the biggest, you know, gas in the tank, I guess, in terms of trying to figure it out. And yeah, 15 years in, I'm still trying to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I was, I was telling him um, when he was coming here, he was like, how do you get better at defense? And I'm like, it's learning new tricks, mm -hmm. understanding tricks, understanding, you know, behavior of what an offensive player do. Um, for me, it was, I'm just going to try to score on you. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, That's the best defense, I mean? though. Because it, it was one of those things I remember, um, <laughs> like, you know, with Kobe, it was more mind games, right? Yeah. So I remember I'm cooking, and he's like, uh, come guard me. Why? So you can put so you can put me in the post, beat on my body, and then I'm too tired to try to score. No, 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 that's what we got the fitness for, right? You know, so like when when he said uh, hunting, they don't hunt you anymore. I'm pretty sure they don't because you started scoring more, and now you know the older you got, you starting averaging 30. I'm less likely to want to pick on you knowing that you have that. <laughs> but like like Ty Lu, who's given me a lot of props over the years because we've had a lot of battles, he makes it known, like, I'm trying to bring you in because I'm trying to tire you out. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make you think about anything other than just scoring. Um, so there's, a, yeah, there's an intention behind it. And you also take it as, like, respect because of that, because you can score, because mm -hmm. they're trying to, you know, uh, play the numbers game on that. Them trying to hunt you is a sign of respect too, because it's like we we know it's in our best interest to to try to wear you down or try to you know distract you. So once you're in those situations enough, you kind of embrace it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, there ain't, ain't no willingness to just go run over there and switch on the code. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got, I got, you, you, got, you got pride, but it's a different. <laughs> Let's play smart basketball. Smart basketball. <laughs> Best defense, great offense. Never seen a basketball game one with a score was 0-0. Zero, zero. So at the end of the day. But is that, is, that, uh, is that why your condition is like apex? Is because that you know that people are going to try to tire you out on when you're well, on defense? Yeah, just trying to master both. That's a good point, yeah. Because... Uh, I, that's the care factor of just trying because you get exposed a little bit when you try to make that transition to becoming, a, like I said, a better defender, an above average defender, um, because it, it, it takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to bring it on the other side. So that endurance is developed by focusing on both. I mean, we've all been in situations, us three, where you like, you do know where to pick and choose your spots because you're playing 82 games and. You know, if you're trying to play 35 plus a night, it's not like you're picking up 94 feet every mm -hmm. possession. But when it's your turn to make the read, when it's your turn to fight over the screen, uh, or switch and hold somebody up in the post, like you're ready for those moments. Um, and like I said, just don't be a what's the the bull the matador thing. Yeah, matador, like just don't yeah. be that. Yeah, matador just don't defense. be that. So as I had those days. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those days. Like, hey, man, hey, you got it, man. I, I, I got to last the next four minutes. Man, I can't get another foul. <laughs> so we out, we're out here for the showcase. We see you with the, the tough crowd. Yes, Curry sir. collab. Talk a little bit about how that, that happened. Y'all both came into the league together. Now y'all collaborating on fire gear that I can still get off even in my 40s. That part. But, I mean, I, I'll start just knowing – uh, Brandon was the first signature athlete that uh, Under Armour signed from a basketball perspective and, you know, created the first signature shoe, um, was a culture driver in terms of what the signature game was back in the day. Um, and I was with the other brand at the time and uh, just kind of keeping an antenna on of what was going on in the, in, the, in the game. So when I made the switch in 2013, I wanted to become a signature athlete too. And, you know, it's been cool to be on that journey. And it's such a full circle moment to, you know, be able to collab on what he's been doing, um, you know, with Tough Crowd and, and really trying to infiltrate the market with, with amazing product and gear and storytelling. Like now he's putting his, uh, his fingerprint on the Curry brand, which is dope. Like we got a lot of cool stuff coming. Yeah, I think our relationships too, Chris Stone, mm -hmm. Nick DePaula, Ryan Drew, um, you know, all those guys that, you know, I, I've been knowing forever, too. So it's, it's, it's definitely a full circle moment. Um, we're, the, we're actually the first two athletes to actually uh, collab together. That makes sense. You know, <laughs> huh? What? Well, me and Dame, what I should put the shoe. No, no, a full collection. Oh, yeah, I knew Gil was going to respond like that. <laughs> I ain't touched clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about the full, we talk about the full yeah, drip. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, full yeah, drip. Yeah, full yeah, drip. Yeah. No, nah, but I'm enjoying it, man. It's, it is a full circle moment, you know. Um, you know, we're dropping in 11-11. Um, it's very, you know, it's a spiritual, 
spiritual moment for me. Uh, I know for him, for him also, you know, 11-11 um, means, you know, stand in line, um, stand in the lane that God has for you. And, you know, it's been working. So it's, it's going to be dope, you know, what they're going to say now, for real. <laughs> Count your days, other brands. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mule, like to say. So let's talk a little bit about the Warriors. Trey went down, uh, ship and pool to the Wizards. You guys got mm -hmm. CP3. Now, Gil, uh, when CP3 came in the league, you worked out with him, helped get him right. Mm -hmm. When you were in college, you went to CP3's camp, worked mm -hmm. with each other. Obviously, once y'all got to the league, Twister memes, things like that, you know, the fake laughs with Steve Kerr. <laughs> but now y'all are a teammate. I mean, we still look at that Twister meme. I had to pull it up still just to go back down memory lane. But that's just a part of the game, competitive nature. I'm sure CP3 would feel the same. But now you guys are teammates. So how do you envision that working out? And how do you feel like that CP3 situation is going to impact team chemistry? Uh, it's it's one of those things where you have a guy that just understands how to play basketball. He has elevated teams that he's been on his entire career, and even at this stage, like what he did in Phoenix when he's been there. Uh, I know they you know didn't accomplish the goal, but they were better because of his leadership and his ability to manage the flow of games. And so there's a lot of excitement that for us, like if we want to talk about you know strict X and O's. He connects a lot of lineups for us in terms of being able to help some of the young guys figure out, you know, what it means to play winning basketball and be in the right spots. He's obviously um, a great leader in terms of his communication. Like he's going to get on you. He's going to, you know, over communicate, <laughs> and we need that in terms of. I've already seen him playing pickup with him. You know, him helping J.K. Just you know, how to help run the pick and roll, where to be at, giving him confidence in those type of scenarios. So that'll help us. Um, in terms of trying to be more cohesive, you know, when I'm on the floor, when I'm off, uh, me and Clay being able to run off the ball if, if CP's, you know, running the point. Um, we obviously have a lot of questions to answer in terms of who's starting, who's finishing, and that'll play itself out. But at the end of the day, we all, I think, are motivated to win. You know, I'm sure nobody more than him. And for us to know exactly where, you know, we feel like we belong is as a team. So there's a lot going for us in that respect to try to put all our energy towards that. Um, there's going to be a lot of narrative and, and, and conversation again around, you know, sacrifice and what that, what that looks like when it comes to, you know, there's only five guys on the court at a time. But uh, I think we can all figure that out. So that's going to be our challenge at the end of the day. That, 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 I mean, his style looks like it helps, you know, Kaminga and Looney a lot. For sure. Right? Um, and I, it seemed like last year those are the two guys that really needed to be pumped up. And it, it seems like what he does great actually will will enhance the, the, the ability a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I think a lot of it too, because like you said, it's just another guy that's comfortable with the ball or more than comfortable with the ball in his hands. It gives us a different change of pace mm -hmm. if the game slows down a little bit and CP's you know, one of the greatest ever in terms of running that pick and roll and, you know, you know, dicing up defenses like that way, and if you put spacing around him too, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's. I'm looking forward to seeing you know those, those two guys. I mean, Kaminga and Moody like take a step up in the sense of, you know, just just figuring out again what it takes to play winning basketball. They have so much talent, um, and I'm excited just to see it all kind of connect because you know it, it's time to make that jump. Um. Iggy told us um, it made sense early, but the um, the the chip on the shoulder, mm -hmm. what 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 For keeps me? yes, uh, what what keeps it there? I don't know. I I the way I've explained it is like from coming up playing AAU to college, like I had such a. Uh, I would say normal. It was like everything I got in terms of you know accomplishing things at the next level, I had to earn with the work, and then you know I kind of kind of do it in, in silence a little bit because nobody was really worried about me you know, on the national scale until the 08 run at Davidson, and so all the way up until my sophomore year, like I had to really earn everything because I was a late bloomer physically, like obviously the recruiting thing and the stuff that's in the documentary, but. Mm -hmm. That's all I've seen the game, so there's a gratitude that comes with it. And then, you know, with all the accomplishments in the league, like there's a healthy insecurity that I have of like having to back it up every mm -hmm. year. And so that drives me, um, you know, in off season workouts and just being uh, confident that I still have a lot more to accomplish out there. And to be honest with you, I just love playing basketball. Like, 
no matter where it is, uh, that helps you know embrace the grind because you know we've been doing this for a long time and you realize how many games you played, how many hours you've been in the gym, how many miles you put on your legs. There's something freeing about putting that ball in your hand, just going to hoop. Yeah. Like, and so I still want to maintain that as much as I can. Um, but that healthy insecurity is real, just because um, I've out kicked my coverage in terms of dreams that I've you know imagined in this game, and still feel like I got let a lot more in the tank. So that's where it's at. So talk a little bit about that. 35 years old, entering year 15. I mean, you look at guys like LeBron going to year 21. Do you have a you have a target of where you want to play? You want to get to year 20? Do you, I mean, is there is there a set target or goal you have right now for how long you want to keep I mean, playing this game? It's somewhere in that range, but I think <laughs> I never imagined myself being the 40 plus dude, like trying to hold on for dear life. Like, but who knows what my body will look like or feel like at that point? So, I got three years left on my deal, starting you know, including this year. So at least that, and then kind of figure it out from there. Just, I am blessed to know and hope that, um, you know, no matter how many years I do play, that it, playing for one franchise and being a part of that group that, uh, of, of the legends that have, you know, accomplished that feat and won at the highest level and all that. Like, I don't ever take that for granted either because you got, you know, the Coves, the uh, Magics, uh, Dirt, Tim Duncan, like those guys, helped establish a culture. Um, one, did it with a lot of different, um, you know, roster combinations and different parts in, you know, in, term, in, in their career. So like, that's that's dope. But I don't really put a, too much of a timeline outside of my contract now, just knowing that'll give me about 38 and okay. seven, 17 <laughs> years in the league. It's like, sheesh, just give me that. Just give me that. I ain't skipping to go play golf just yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're, um, you're, 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 you're 04, what is it? Oh, no, 14, 15 run, right? Mm -hmm. I was talking to ex teammate Prof, and we was just talking about your shooting, right? And I was like, yo, how many shots you think he takes, right? Because I was like, so I said, Prof, you think he a better shooter than me? Prof was like, fuck yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> But I shot a lot. I said, man, I shot a lot. How many shots? Like, he has to be triple me, and that's impossible. Like, do he sleep? Do you? Like, so I was like, yo, call, call uh, Ritter. I want to know how long he's in that gym. It just didn't make sense. I was like, yeah. I know I sit in the gym three times a day, right? Uh -huh. I, I, like, I shot. And when I was watching, I was like, I can't do half the shit he's doing. Like, I'm, I'm looking at my shooting percentage like, fuck. <laughs> this is this is crazy as hell, bro. Because it's like this, the the stuff you were doing, I just it didn't look the same. You know what I mean? It didn't look the same. And I shot all the time, and I'm yeah. like, I was like, could you even count how many shots you've taken in your in your career? Like, I I was trying to do that exercise in my head. Just, and like, I know it's somewhere like past like 700,000. I don't think it's a million, but it's somewhere like there. And you just realize you put that on paper and like. That's a lot of shots. I remember I, I, I did a summer where I was like, ah. Uh, it wasn't even a summer, it was 70 days. I was like, I'm shooting 100,000 shots yeah, in 70 that. days. That's wild. Right? Yeah. And, and, nah. <laughs> like, I was watching you. I, I was, I recorded, the, uh, I recorded your, that's a warm-up. Is that like your pre-game warm-up? That like, was probably, that was a pre-game warm-up. Not that, probably a little less speed, speed. just, uh, but the amount of shots here. And then off-season workout, that's probably, First one? 30, 40% of the workout. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was telling my son, I was like, yeah, you're in trouble when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a capital, I am not Curry. I, I. <laughs> but I'm looking at the speed, looking at it, and I'm like, it's, there's just different levels. And, it, like, and, and, unless you, and I was telling the kids behind me, I said, unless you see it, yeah. unless you see it with your eyes, you really don't have no idea. So, uh, Rand has come to my camp last, couple years and that's like one of my favorite parts of the experience is either uh, I'll, like last year I had him like sit down and watch that for like 20 minutes and then this year I, I started working out before they came in so when they came in I was kind of full go and I think that uh, like you said matching what they think is work to what the visual of you know the level that I, or the speed and intensity and focus that I do in my workouts I had to learn that too like 
when I was coming out of college, I thought I was working hard mm -hmm. um, until I went and worked out with Edon Ravine. Um, yeah. And I was, oh, this is, oh, this is the mm -hmm. pace and, you know, how, how tired I am after this workout. And um, so that, that progression, is, you have to be open to it and you got to expose yourself and be vulnerable. Like, all right, I'm here. I need to get here. And how do I connect that? So when I do those workouts, like I know it's influencing a little bit to, to teach, you know, the next generation on, on the level that they need to be at. And just patience too, like just, you gotta work up to it, mm -hmm. but um, that's where you need to be. Yeah, everyone wants to be Steph, but you gotta see what he works out like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> yeah, study. Yeah. Film study. Yeah, so seeing your schedule, right? You know, I've been around you for, uh, couple times now like seeing your schedule seeing your crew um you know i'm just man i just gotta tap my head off to like everything that you do like i don't know when you sleep like i i, I couldn't i can't tell you like when you sleep um i think when we landed yesterday you went and worked out like you know you went in and talked to like yeah like, how do you keep that balance for with family with the golf with ball like where do you like how do you keep that balance and what keeps you going the the theme of thriving chaos is um, kind of the life mantra because uh, there's ebbs and flows to what that balance looks like you know at different parts of the off season obviously in season is totally different with our schedule and practice and the grind and travel and all that and even like three years ago thinking about what off season looked like versus now so you just have to make sure for me. Um, to your point, your first thing you said is my team, right? Like the people around you being able to um, be on that journey with you, learn the things that, um, you know, allow us to be productive, allow me to have the focus to be able to show up in the rooms I need to with the right kind of mentality, the right energy, still make sure I'm taking care of the main thing, which is obviously hooping and preparing yourself for the, for the next season. but. It's a learned skill, right? Like mm -hmm. with everything that you do. And so um, as long as you're continuing to take the temperature checks on like, are you able to present your best self in all of these different areas that are that are important? And they, they might look a certain way now, but they're gonna look a different way in a month. They might look a different way six months from now. Uh, you just have to keep reiterating that. For me, that's kind of been the, the secret sauce. Um, and then I just try not to make excuses, man. Like that's the biggest thing there's, there's times where you're tired and all that, but, um, you know, I can figure out where I can get rest and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, like, look what we're all doing. Like, we're doing things we love to do. The way that y'all said, when we sat down here and y'all, like, had that giddy energy, it's like, for real. That's how I feel in most, pretty much everything that I do. So if I can identify those, too, it makes it a little easier um, to uh, to push through, you know, the, the craziness of, of, of it all. So. Aaron, you're 15. You've seen a lot of these now young guys, up and coming guys. Who do you feel like is a guy that's going to carry the torch and have an influence? Maybe not like you, obviously, with, with the shooting, all that, but going to have an influence on the game at a level like yourself. I mean, it's a good question. Like, there's a lot of. Or to say, like, who's his like favorite young guys? Yeah, yeah, it's just. Like, who's going to be that guy that's going to take this league into the next? Iteration? The hard part of answering that question now is. Uh, I didn't realize how young some of these dudes really are. Like, you forget, because I'm 35 going into my 15 year. Like, you got that crop of guys like the Lucas, Jason Tatum, uh, and he's on the younger side of that, but they're still like in their mid to early, early to mid 20s. Like, and still a staff, they've, they've accomplished a lot of stuff, but they still, the runway is still in front of them. So, um, if you look at like that crew, that crop of guys, I think they've kind of defined themselves as, um, you know, the ones that are going to be on the stage every playoff run trying to, you know, win the championship and, you know, chasing MVPs and All-Stars and all NBA teams and all that. Um, Luka's like the guy, obviously, that's that's right on the precipice of um, of accomplishing all those accolades and and just, you know, what he's, what he's about as a player. Um, and that threshold of like, how do you just crack through? I hope it's not now, <laughs> but it's like when you play against him, like you can feel it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, those, you go through, you know, the roster, like, even like Trey Young, like a dude that, you know, who's been in the conference finals already in his career, you know, they're trying to figure out the right combination around him to complement, you know, what he brings on the, on the team uh, in terms of his leadership and his ability to, uh, to push the envelope in terms of winning games. So 
there's a lot of young talent, man. And the league is in, is in good hands um, in that respect. And but I, like I said, I just hope it's not it's not too soon because <laughs> we still got we still got a lot to do. So when you look at your team. You got you got three years left in your deal. Draymond just re up. Yeah. Clay's gonna be a free agent next offseason if they can't work something out. When you just look at that Warriors big three crew, that unit, how much more time do you guys think you have left, and do you think you have at least one more title run left in you? Yeah, we, we for sure do, and hopefully that's this year. I mean, the nature of the NBA, the business of it, you know how things change really quickly, and the fact that we've been able to, you know, keep at least us three together, obviously Andre, um, for our, you know the bulk of that run besides two years, <clears throat> um, like that's unprecedented in, in terms of just three you know core guys trying to you know keep proving people wrong that we still have what it takes so we're in that season again like uh we're, we're the hunter now not the hunted and you know trying to embrace that in the energy uh like you said draymond was, was big to bring him back and, and lock that lock him up for the next three years uh hopefully we can do the same with clay um when the time comes but yeah this year is the run and then you reassess at the end of the year to figure out what's going to keep us in that in that conversation. Because I think the biggest thing is like the the notion that you always want to be the team that everybody's going to pick. Like that's that's a good spot to be in. But if you're in that six to eight, you know, group of six to eight teams that you know legitimately has a shot in terms of the experience, the the cohesiveness, um, the sense of identity of how you play the game. Like if you're in that conversation. You know, hope for health. You hope for uh, people to continue to play at the level that they need to, and you get to the playoffs, and then it's just roll the dice, see what happens. Um, and that's all we want is just a, is just a chance, and I feel like we got it this year. So, and, and said you want y'all smoke <coughs> and to turn Curry camp out 2018. He did. He did. But he said he said he wants <laughs> he said the Warriors smoke in the playoffs. Is he oh, barking is that what up? Because of Draymond. Is he barking up the wrong tree though? <laughs> he said because is, of Draymond. <laughs> I love that though. I love that we got some real estate in the off season <laughs> in terms of people thinking about us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've we've handled that question plenty of times <laughs> plenty in terms of, of <laughs> in terms of whatever the motivation is, whatever your energy you're coming with. But you know, that's why we we're the most competitive group. I think you know, gonna be proving it over and over again. So we don't need any extra extra okay. riff on that. And the last thing I got, well, I got the last one. Okay. All right, we're going to give him some gentleman's cut, love, Gil. That's it. Let's <laughs> um, no, talk about it. Are you the best point guard ever? Yes. I have to, yes. Is me and Magic? Is that the, is the conversation? Yeah, yeah. Like, it just. You know, because, you know, as, as we can look at stats all day, right? You know, we yeah. can look at stats and try to judge. Um, I wasn't around with Magic. Me either. I know, I know, <laughs> right? So I have so much respect. I know there's not a lot of six nine point guard. No one's trying. To, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the '90s growing up. There was nobody trying to be a six nine point guard, right? I mean, it just. Mm -hmm. But I, I can witness and watch every kid trying to be Curry. You know what I mean? So it's like the influence that you really have on the game, from the position as a player. I, you know, I look at the stats and say, okay, Magic then Curry. When I look at the kids and I watch AAU, it's like, nah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, obviously, I have to answer it that way, but I really feel like, to your point, like, Magic's resume is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. all right, so the fact that we're even having that conversation is a, is, that's a, <laughs> it's a place I never thought I'd be in. But the fact that, to your point of, like, how you grade it in the whole conversation, that's why we have the conversations, because mm -hmm. it's fun and it's, yeah is you know measuring errors against each other and i love that's what basketball that's what sports is all about that's why people watch that's why people get you know in heated debates about it i love it so you put me on my own team yeah i'm gonna rep myself for sure but magic uh like that's a that's a lofty resume to shoot for right so i'm i'm still going let's see let's see what happens come on I mean, it's point forward. I mean, it's just, you know what I mean? You know, like, we, like, no, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I, it's, 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 it's point, I mean, you know how you be cheating. It's point forward over there. We got the point guard right here. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's good for me. Like, I used to believe in the old school, right? I remember I made a comment and said, and I don't know if everyone got it. I said, you know, Curry is not top five point guard, but he's a top five guard. You know what I mean? And I, I said, because, you know, Growing up, it was like 
your type of guard is not a point. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool, that's fair, right? Okay, so where we at then, right? <laughs> where we at then? So now when people say, all right, you know, name your five point guards, and I'm like, all right, it's all scoring guards. You know, y'all can keep them assists to yourself, right. right? I need someone who has all the ammo. So I'm loving, I'm loving, you know, the day that it's turned into, you know, more of the guards that can do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So you, ha like, you have to now because that's yeah. how the game shifts. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I'm saying, who's probably the last uh, pure point guard? Who is the last yeah, point guard? Yeah. That, yeah. Who is like Rondo? Like CP? Be, like that group? Like, even Rondo. Darren Williams was like kind yeah. of. Kind of hybrid. You have Lamelo, yeah. right? He likes to get buckets too. I know. So it's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a hard conversation because yeah, the, it, it uh, the game has changed. Yeah. So I mean, Seth, we appreciate you, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you taking time out. Appreciate you, the Under Armour. Also, Gentlemen's Cut in stores now. Yes, it is. We were trying to jam yes, you up. We got to run, but we need to get that sponsorship. We we was repping you in Vegas. We had Zion pull up. So with the, the unofficial beverage of Zion Williamson's. <laughs> unprompted pull-ups in summer league, unofficially, but we're trying to get that gentleman's cup relationship crack. We got Mr. B as the official sponsor. Mr. B, yeah. He could be like the Dos Equis dude for the hood. Now that it's on shelves, we might have to up there. We're going to get it going, but yes, we appreciate you taking time and doing this, man. Absolutely. Big Gills Arena coming to you from Baltimore dot 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 county. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot I think they said they're going to press me. Baltimore. <laughs> they said this is not Baltimore. It's Baltimore County, but we out, man. Woo woo. Woo woo. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few. They carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse of blessed with desire? It's true. I'm going to say it loud, none other than who? Some swear by Nikes, others love Adidas. Rappers be rocking crowds, I'd rather rock arenas. You may have a nice shop, you super set with the pill. Who made the zero famous? It's Gil.